Oh yeah. This just keeps getting better and better. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Last Epoch. 11th Hour Games have officially dropped their September development update, and there is so much great information in this. When I mean they literally just dropped it, I mean it came out a couple of minutes ago. And I've read through it twice, and I'm ready to dissect it with you. Now, just a very quick beat a dead horse moment at the beginning of this video. Wolson Studios just dropped their August communication on August 31st. 11th Hour Games dropped their September communication on September 2nd. See the difference from studios? Okay, moving on. So we're going to start with the big news. And this is like, I'm just going to give you all the big news right at the beginning. The CT multiplayer build for Last Epoch is going live 24-7 starting in early September. This means our community testers will be in full multiplayer test mode all day, every day, as we polish, improve, and prepare for our up-and-coming multiplayer launch. We'll be diving into details regarding multiplayer development in the sections below. Okay, so I'm going to give you it all right now. What's really important. This new program, the, the CT multiplayer build program, that the link is right here, it'll be in the description if you want to apply, is moving towards a thousand players. That is almost double the concurrent players that sometimes you will see now. Which means everybody playing the game right now that applies will likely get in. And anybody playing the game right now can play multiplayer with their friends. And again, this is coming early September. We're in September and it's already September 2nd, so it's already early September. We're getting close. We're getting close. Now, we do need to talk a little bit more about multiplayer as far as the update. It's going to be Cliff Notes versions. I'm going to skim a lot of this, only giving you kind of the heart high arching points, okay? But remember that 090 is not just multiplayer. There's lots of other stuff coming, okay? So we'll talk about multiplayer for a little bit more and then we will move on to those other details. Uh, progress. So they were working on bugs. They were working on channeling abilities. Most of that stuff has been ironed out. They are also working on the chat where you can get direct support directly through the chat and be able to link certain items, which I really, really want. I want to be able to find that awesome legendary potential for unique, put it in the chat and brag about it. Please make that happen. They're working on experience, stability and services. And this is just kind of encompassing everything, your ability to log in. Cues, smoothness, logging out suddenly, game crashing, not losing your inventory, all that stuff you would come to expect from a modern next-gen ARPG online experience they are working on. See, look at all that time. In here, they talk about basically what I read to you at the beginning, the 24-7 CT program being expanded. And this is the big news. To me, this is like some of the biggest news of this post. 1,000 users. Basically, the entire current community can log into multiplayer. That is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Make sure you apply. All right, in 11th Hour Games, let me stream it, you know? We don't need an NDA. All right. Up and coming performance blogs. Okay, so now let's talk performance. We're done talking about multiplayer. You get it. Here we go. You hear a lot about performance. You hear a lot about frames. I mean, even me on my podcast, we joke about it. It's like, hey, with the new 4090 Ti, would that get us 60 frames on Last Epoch? Because people saying 3090 doesn't. Now in here is a detail of something that we currently have or something that we're going to get, okay? So right here you have, what's the dread? The Ancient Dragon. So here's the Ancient Dragon. If you've played Last Epoch, you've fought this dragon, I don't know, a thousand times. Actually, I probably fought it more than a thousand times. And on here you will see in its current state, the frames when the Ancient Dragon is doing its fire abilities fall. But I think as far as 40, See, 90, 80, 70, 60, 40, okay? With the new update that is coming, here is the Ancient Dragon. Look at the difference. Look at that smoothness. So it does drop during the ability, which of course is going to happen, but you're talking about moving from 115 to 99, and then it jumps back up. Like that, this is the stuff that the game desperately, need, desperately needs needs and honestly it just looks like a more polished scene melee bow and throwing damage okay again 
I don't want to read all this because I know these videos can be super long and unbelievably boring. Okay, so here's what's happening. Adaptive spell damage. If you have played Last Epoch, if you have adaptive spell damage, that damage is going to be applied to cold. It's going to be applied to fire. It's going to be applied to lightning. Okay, it's going to go towards the spell. When it comes to melee, it is not like that. Normally, it's like melee physical. And that is normally what we get with 90% of our weapons. So what they're saying is they're going to be changing that so that adaptive spell damage will also kind of transfer over to melee damage. So now weapons will have melee ja damage so then it can work with every single type of melee skill. So it's balanced, good synergy, you know, and it makes sense. It sucks when you find a weapon, but it doesn't have the right implicit on it. And then you just you just don't use it. OK, when it comes to throwing as well, they are going to be scaling throwing with kind of that same base because throwing is really good early in the game. But later on the game, it doesn't scale as well. So they're going to try and boost up throwing damage and give a higher base to just throwing so that you can use the example they have in here. You can use hammers and your damage could be hammers instead of hammers triggering like smite or something like that. OK, that's what all these paragraphs are. We continue downward ailment changes. <sighs> this one's a little more complex. I'll do a little bit of reading, OK? While we want to maintain a high level of death and complexity in Last Epoch system, we also put a large priority on getting players invested in that system, though to care about the details. And a part of that process is making sure that the stats effects of the interactions are clear. There are two areas we felt we were easily misunderstood when it came to scaling the damage of ailments. One is that they are affected by penetration and the other that increases effect acts as a multiplier to their damage. But multiple sources of increase effect are additive. To alleviate both concerns, the damage ailments are being replaced stats like 10% increased ignite effect with 10% fire penetration with ignite. Changing the wording a little bit and now we're getting penetration. With this, not all changes are one to one. Many values have been rebalanced to accommodate this change. Most non-damaging ailments such as armor shred will retain their increased effect stats, OK? Ignite effect is just moving to fire penetration with ignite. To me, that sounds better, OK? Another commonly discussed topic we've had to look at on ailments, particular resistance shredding ailments tend to greatly favor hit fasting, hitting fast hitting builds. This isn't great for performance, networking and build diversity. As such, we've reduced the stack limits on resistance shredding ailments. Resist shredding ailments, including shock, will shock to 10 from 20. Meanwhile, poison, we knew it was coming. Poison nerf, they've said it, they've been saying it for months. We'll continue to stack infinitely, but only the first 30 stacks will target will shred resistance, okay? So now does a maximum of 30 stacks of poison will shred resistances. All right, and that will definitely bring it in line. I mean, I guess, you know, during multiplayer, poison is like unbelievably strong if you got everybody running it because it just scales infinitely. OK, something else that they have teased, and I know this image is really, really small, but down here you will see the numbers that they are not 15 plus, which is what they used to show. Poison is at 43 and bleed is at 29. So now it'll show the true number of stacks. And I can't wait to have a stack competition to see who's going to be able to get the most numbers on there. Any four digits? I don't know if that's possible. Now, they're also going to be updating damage over time's tool tip, which is desperately needed. I, they don't even really say how they're going to calculate it. They're just saying that they're going to change it up because obviously you have damage over time and then you have, let's say, poison and then you got effect and now you got penetration and then you've got duration. How does all of that work together? So they are still working on the testing of these changes, but they do want it to make a lot more sense. By the way, I have not seen anything in there, but we also want minion tooltip DPS. That's a personal ask of mine. All right, let's talk about some updated models and VFX. So I've already shown this during dev chat, I think 64, the new models for totems. So. Totems, hopefully they buff totems as well, not just the visuals, but obviously the new visuals are awesome. They explain that the old visuals is basically the same totem. They just put different stuff on it where now they are all new assets to the game. And of course, the storm totem is the best one, which is like breathing and pulsating as it is on the ground. So that's pretty cool. 
They are also updating spells. So you can see these. Wandering Spirits and Fireball. Dude, this, this update is going to be huge. This update's going to be huge. They've also updated some enemies. So here is Current. And I don't know if it's like spazzing out or maybe trying to do a little dance or something. But here is the old asset. And here is the new asset. When I first saw this, I thought maybe it was like Goro. And it has multiple arms. But actually, these other limbs are just kind of attached to its shoulders. I don't know. Maybe they detach and act as arms. I'm not sure. I believe last, last but not least, let's talk about some, or actually let's listen to some updates for sound. You know, I feel like SFX are not talked about enough. We all know how important sound is in the game, and this is something that they've actually been working on a lot. I've covered it on a few videos, and I'm hoping that we continue to get sound effect rework videos like this. Maybe, Mike, this is something you could put in your little teasers on Friday's stream because people truly care about the sound. All right. And that is what we have. So in closing, OK, so in closing, we have multiplayer early September, the month we are currently in coming to 1000 players. All right. We have improvements for sound and visuals, including enemy visuals, skill visuals and environments. On top of that, we are also getting a huge boost to performance when it comes to frames based upon everything they're doing. And that's just the stuff we're telling us this month. We know we're going to be getting you new uniques. One in particular will be my new unique that's coming to the game for this update and lots of other goodies. I couldn't be more excited. It sounds good. I want to know your opinion. Are you happy with this? Do you think this thing looks like Goro? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Two asks at the end of this video. Ask number one. I'm hoping today's the day I have earned your subscription. Hope and today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. It really does help the channel for 2022. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 45 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. We have a weekly blog post, weekly podcast, access to the VIP lounge, and lots of other goodies based upon where you sign up at. First link in the description. That's all I've got for last epoch. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out. <laughs>